We left off yesterday. Uh, we did not have these bars in here yesterday. We just had them going straight through. Uh, when Jolene turned the camera off, I, I was still working. So I end up making this piece and this piece and put that in there. And that was just a matter of putting a piece up there, holding it into where I want it, tracing it off, cutting it, putting it in. As I'm doing this, you can see how I've welded it all up, um, an inch apart, half an inch apart. Uh, I did not like this piece here. Um, as I watched the video, uh, this piece cut here, I just said, whatever, I'll just take it out. So I took that piece out and I made a brand new piece. And what I did is I made it run, ran, run to this piece, which opened it up a little bit wider, give me a little bit more room inside. You can see a little bit of metal here, and a little bit of metal there. And that all that did, instead of me bending it out and having that little bit, I took and started it fresh there and ran it to there, which gave me a little bit the whole way. You can see how I've got it welded up there. That does not bother me how I've got it welded. There was quite a, a gap going on there, but it was very easy to fill. I know I have penetration because when I was welding it, um, if it's, I don't know if it's blunky on that side or not. On this side, I can see that the weld is quite meaty. It's gonna to need to be ground to let something lay flush. And the reason being is it because it had no gap in between it, that, not that much gap in between it, and the weld puddled up on it. That's all that means. Uh, we'll grind that off. I've still got weld on this side and this side. What I'm gonna do right now is what, what, what we're gonna do, or what I'm going to do, and what I, what I mean by were, as you're watching, <laughs> this is what we're gonna do. Um, I'm going to finish studying it up. Then I'm gonna come in here and cut the cross members off. Uh, I'm gonna put the dat, no, I'm gonna weld two pieces from the top here up into the window, I don't know what you call that, the window tray. The reason I left the window in the car is because we are not using it and it held the window section in place without me doing anything. Uh, if I took that out, well then I'd have to, maybe what, when I was building the car, I probably would have had to brace it. With the window in it at all times, I know the window fits, and uh, that's what I enjoy. Uh, so I'm gonna make a couple braces from here to there so we can put a hole in it and screw it up through to the wood. Uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna continue on to stud this up, and you'll get to see when I cut this out what it looks like. We'll make a little piece of metal for that and maybe we'll put the dash back in it to see what's going on. As we look at it, you can see there's quite a bit of space here. There is. Um, I haven't forgotten we have to put a shifter on this. So the shifter is going to be here and there's generally a lot of stuff underneath the shifter that has to work to make it work. So that'll be the room for that. Also, for me, you know, the rear end, the axle come right here when I had it put together, mocked up, it was right on top of that. So that little bit there does not bother me either. As, I don't know, someone said I should have come down, took what it, well, if I'd done that, I would have had this, and then when I would have come back up again, and the console of the car would have been useless. As I've built it this way, it serves a purpose as an armrest, it's strength, it's a lot less, lot less cuts because I'd have to come down here and cut it again to cut it to go up that way. This is just straightforward. I've, I've, I've done it as quick as, and easiest as possible with uh, the mind of using it too. Like we can put an armrest on here. Uh, we could put a something in there like a console of some sort. We have been thinking, seeing where Jeff's wood is so mint, um, when this dash goes on and this console is here, it's a nice place for a piece of veneer that would, you know, step it up a little bit. It's funny, eh? Um, when you, we, we Google Bugatti uh, interior, interior veneer, and the first video that comes up is Jolene's. She knows what she's doing, doesn't she? She knows what she's doing. So I'm just going to cut a few of these off and, and stud that up in there. And we'll get it finished off so you can see what it looks like. And this can be done on any car. Like uh, if you're air riding a car and you want to shove that drive shaft up in through the car, I find that the square tubing is easy to go to just because it's hard to get that roll in that length of metal for the distance of the drive shaft sometimes. And this square tubing is very nice, strong, makes it very nice and strong. And uh, it's easier somewhat to make patterns for flat things. Yeah, here we go.
I get, I take right off and say I don't need them glasses, but first thing I'm gonna do is get welded. So I'm just getting hooked up here, getting ready. I got me wrong glasses on. Uh, in the mail, <laughs> I got some glasses holder. I just didn't bring them up. It's funny, everybody get ready to thank you very much, you know. Thank you very much. Any little bit of thought at all tells me that you're thinking of us. We appreciate it. We appreciate you guys buying here. We appreciate it all, right, baby? We appreciate it all. And in return, we'll show you what we're doing. Right? Fair is fair. We're doing, you do us a favor, we do you a favor. That's how it goes. Not a favor, but whatever. I am that kind of person that will use metal over again, like I cut that off. That was a piece that was cut up in there. And I'm using this piece because it's only got a little tiny piece of weld on it. And I'm going to use it. I'm not going to go get brand new stuff. I'm just going to, I cut it off. But now I want the grinder to have some flat and really knock the little cans of weld off before I use it. But I will use metal that I cut out of the car, no problem at all. I do not go get more or new metal. I just use what I have generally and I try to make it all work. Just didn't want any sharp stuff on it. Plug that back in because I know I'm probably going to use it. So what I've done here, I just I know where the cross members are. I just took a piece of metal, put it in there, cut it off. But to get it to get it where I'm going, I just square it up by eye, or not square it up by eye, but I put it where I think I want it and square it up like that. Try it again. gas put on. You can see there, oh, see how it's puddled up like that? That means that was a tight fit. And I tried to hold it to it to make it penetrate. And I got a little puddle there. I'm going to have to take that off the flapper wheel. I've got a gap on the bottom, which is nice. The top is, has not got a gap. Oh, I'll get that again. But I'll have four sides to weld so I know where to hold. Yeah. In. We're seeing what we're watching. I'm not going to do anything there because we have that one. Go up to the floor. So I'm going to do I got two more on this side. Two more on this side. Okay. Cool. I'm going to cut another piece of square tubing to do the next one. I'm going to cut it so it's close and then I'll mark it off when I get inside. Cross member. 
We'll just show you what, get this video and we show you what it looks like. I'm going to say it's 878. Eight. I'm going to cut this one. What the heck? What the heck? No, I'm trying to just get them straight up and down. Somewhat. <laughs> Didn't have that part one, just like, well. Huh, that will do it. That'll do it. Instead of me going up, up that way. I have to go on the angle with the I'm doing so good, am I? With the welder. And this thing here, right? I'm hoping that I got that to stay that time. Beautiful. Nine and a quarter. Get it smart that time and just tacked it on in place and then I'll plumb it up. Hopefully it'll stay. Well, maybe not. <laughs> not smart that time. Get it in there first. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. You can, oh, you can see the weld is out a little bit, but when it comes up flush like this, 
and then it'll hit the top. Yeah, if you know what I'm trying to tell you. There we go. I'm not going to run the weld on that right now for a second. Well, maybe I should. I think what I'll do is I'll run the weld on this. Just take a second. Weld them ones up. Um, I'll go. I'll make a piece of metal for that. And then I'll drag the welder to the other side. I don't want to drag it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'll weld this up for a second. If it looks bad, I'll just take the grinder and make it look nice. Good article out, or it's a good article, out, wasn't it? Um, Jolene will share it on the computer probably sometime. Sometime, maybe. And we'll go from there. That should be great for that. I'm going to make a make a little piece of metal for the back here. Or I can make that on the other side, I guess. Maybe I'll just run to the other side and set it up. That's what I'll do. I'll run it to the other side, set it up. I can make that piece on this, this side too. So you can see how strong. The center of this car is going to be, um, and that's going to be without hafting to rely on anything. The center of that car is going to be very strong. Uh, when the, even though the floor cross members will be cut out of it, um, that floor will still remain in the same place it is now. And I know that because I'm welding it in the place that it is now, so it will not move. Nice day out there today. We have plus temperatures here. We have snow is melting. We have quite a bit of snow still left over back. We have plus temperatures right now, which is a good thing. And enjoy that. Keep the spirits up. I'm going to try and move a piece of wood around the side. I'm going to get a few other things. Right now it's calm, nice. I want to try the dash in it too. Um, as soon as I get the console done, we can check out the dash and see what that looks like. That would be enjoyable. So every little process we do on this, we get to see something. And uh, generally we show you everything, so you get to see it at the same time we do. Hit that red baby. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me get a piece of metal over here. And a piece right there. Now I'm going to use it.
find that so much easier than running over with a tape measure is to just set it there, mark it where it needs to be. I find that much easier. Um, the tape measure, obviously. Um, I always said there's only one thing in life that won't lie to you is a tape measure. But sometimes I wonder. <laughs> said over and over and over again I guess I'm not worried about the gap that I have and I, I take that as a positive so I can use it to penetrate if you basically what I'm doing I'm turning it into a positive so I can just put it in and have my my brain think it's okay <laughs> simple as that simple as that and a baby simple as that Keep the awful look inside. Huh. Can't do that because that's on an egg. I'm going to do it just like that because it looks good because I can. I noticed the metal, some of the square tubing, you, you find uh, some of the square tubing's got a really sharp 90 on it. This stuff has got a round 90 on it, on the edge. Where it's got a gap like that, start the welder down the bottom, build a puddle, build a puddle, puddle, build a puddle, and then try to get to it. Don't start at the top, it'll burn it off. Just for people that don't know, I will start, I will start my weld on the top piece, not the bottom piece, to weld that. I'll start on the top, full piece of metal, that'll burn that off. Down here, I'll start on, the, on there and I'll weld up. Over here, I'll start down on this and build a puddle and then go up to it. You start trying to weld the other tube and then you'll have it burn off on you. That's just for if you want to know or not. Right? And we got another cross member going here. Find the hearth. I love it. That way there, 
going to gap on both sides. I'm just lining, what I'm doing on the bottom, I'm lining it up with the stud, but trying to put it in the center of the stud on the floor. And then I just go up there and do this trick here with the 90. You can be sure that we got penetration because of the gap. I've, with a too tight of a gap, you get a you get puddling going on, you know. So sometimes it's not as good as you think it is. Helmet's not coming back for me. I will not grind them all off flat either. I'll just take a flapper wheel, knock, knock the head off them. Wow, this is massive annoying. And that's because we buy cheap gear, right? We buy cheap gear sometimes, but it does not matter. We're getting the job done. Cut more little spots here to weld, and I'll put a cap on the back. Also, you can tell a lot by the sound of the welder, how it's working, your sound. You can tell I was getting too close there at the end. See? Listen to the sound of it. Sounds good. Sounds like you're burning in. Beautiful. Um, in there. We'll just flash that off of the flapper wheel, then the welds. There's lots on it. Looks good. That is very strong. I'm going to take the zip cut. I'm going to go up to the middle of that. I'm going to cut all the cross members out so you can see what it's going to do. See if it's going to drop or not. The plasma.
I'm not going to try it. That's the prior right there. I could be cutting from the underneath, I suppose. It's probably easier to cut it off. I think I will, instead of sitting on it and jamming down on it, can't get at it anyways. Just easy. I can see the square tubing underneath here, right? I can't. Uh... It's hurt in the face. It's hurt in the face. You know what they say? It'll grow back. myself yesterday I welded it I welded one of these on the top there and then I put my wrist down on top of it now I got this glove biting it and it's gone the blister is gone <laughs> ah, that light is blinding me and um, we'll turn that down like that tunnels there tunnels there there we go there's a tunnel it did not drop it did jam up but it did not drop um, it's still running nice. I want to make a little piece of metal for this right here. I guess we'll just go on this side of here, lay it on top of that, lay it on top of that, and then weld along down here. I don't know as if I need to bend it out here and do it or not. I enjoy just doing the spot thing. We'll see as what I'm doing is I back off for a second. Now anybody can do that. I think up to me, I think anybody could build that in their center of their car with square tubing and stud it up, or don't even have to stud it up. I'm studying it up because I want to stud it up. You know, I put one in there, I think it was maybe last, no, did I put one in there last night or did I put one in? 
Not sure if I did or not, but once I put one in last night, I looked at the rest of it and I said, why? But in the end, how much stronger will that be with this on every cross member, um, with the car together, with this back tied in with every one across? This would hold more weight than just one, and that's why I did it. Uh, let's face it, the car is being made, you know, structurally by us, and uh, structurally I want it to be able to um, last. Last. Okay, I'm going to piece of metal, I'm going to measure that across there. I got a marker. So, uh, it's funny, we uh, looked at slip, somebody asked me what, Bruce asked me this morning how much a sheet of metal was, and Joanie said 70 some dollars. I said, I think that's 20, you know, it's not 18 gauge. She checked the slip, and it is 20 gauge, and it's funny how I can tell just by picking it off the truck and carrying it up there. Wow, that's not, that's the difference. That's the difference. Now, it's not going to matter in this application because we're going to make panels out of it. In every panel that I have it stepped in, I owned this car when we made four pans a long time ago. We just made a step in like that on each one. What I was thinking, this is what I was thinking, um, when we, I'd like to insulate the car. There's stuff that you can put on your car to insulate it so it does not sound tinny. On the floor, on each piece, like it's like that, we're going to use that, and that's where the insulation is going to go and take up that eighth of an inch to make it flat again for the carpet. That's what I'm thinking. Um, I'm thinking that I might even do a little bead roll in this here. I don't have to, just a flat piece of metal, but I still might do it. Might do it just because I want the the insulation to set on the metal, but I do not want it to change the level. So if I step it down, cut my and what I what I'm going to use is. Uh, it's a basement uh, rack. You can get a whole roll for quite a bit and we'll cut it and we'll make it fit each one and then we'll put it there for the installation to take the, the bounce out of it. Not, the, there's no bounce in that at all, but it'll take the tinny sound or it'll insulate the car well. We'll have to insulate the firewall well. Uh, Doug was saying that the, them engines cause a lot of heat and I would probably say they do because Doug has not steered me wrong yet. So we're gonna make a piece here. So it's six and a half. By four and a half. Six and a half by four and a half. I don't really want to use it. I've got some metal right here. I can clean it off. I can clean it off, can I? It doesn't look straight, so it's just a straight edge there. Four and a half. Six and a half. I wonder if I'm going to get it. There she be, I don't know, you? Nah, nah, nah. Four and a half right there. trick again. <laughs> I'm allowed. And you know why? Because I'm doing the work. I will clean I will clean this off before I put it in there. The assistant is grabbing the other end for me. I'm just going to take this and polish it off with the flapper wheel just so it's take clean it up a little bit. Clean it up a little bit. And the rest, the rest of the console, like the like the sheathing it, and we'll all be done with cardboard. It'll all be done with cardboard.
push bends on it. I'm just gonna draw it on. Let's go up first and see. I'm gonna guess again. down a little bit oops sorry i'm gonna knock the weld down in this corner here a little bit you can see where it's holding that up a little bit and then we'll weld that in there i'm holding it well the side of it see the top there i'm gonna knock that down with a, with a sander knock this down What I'm going to do is I'm going to weld it in the middle and then tap it with the hammer to make it tight. I'll weld it first wherever it's tight, get it to hold its place, and then I will tap it in place. Lay that over the other side. I'm gonna just tap the hammer here. I like, well, I keep saying that. Seam, when I clean that off, seam sealer will stick better on that. Then, then it will with it lapped over like that. It will. It will always do it. I'm going to come to the other side for a second. If you hear me hold the door while I pack that piece on, then I can call it finished. And uh, we can carry on from there. Then I'll try the dash in. And we'll go and put the steering wheel in and that sort of stuff. And talk about the things that we love in life. I try not to hit all, uh, anything that I make, I try not to hit it with a hammer too much. A hammer, a hammer can really destroy a nice piece. If you just take your time a little bit, um, hold your hammer flat. I don't have to hit that with a hammer hard at all. I do not, there's, I've, if you look at the car, and generally you will not find big hammer marks because I don't like hitting it with a hammer.
So what I'm gonna do from here is, is I'm gonna grab the dash. I'm gonna go check on my dog for a second. Check on my dog for a second, maybe she wants in. Maybe she's mad at us. I think she's mad at us, baby, no one out there. <laughs> Any mad at us? Huh? I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, we were doing something. Uh, just what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna throw the dash in. Throw the dash in. Pull the stuff out. So this is this is what I've been thinking. This is actually I've done it before, but Jolene has has called me out. <laughs> this is what happens. I've done it before, and Jolene has called me out. On the underneath of this car, if you can picture it, there is square tubing. Square tubing, a square tubing under this car for the cross members. On John Wilson's car, Corella DeVille. When we did that car, we did the exact same floor method. But on the bottom side, I made panels to fit the flat floor and we louvered the whole bottom of the car. And what we did, the square tubing here, we square tubing it on the bottom. We, we cut it back, say three quarters of an inch and we put square tubing all along the face like this on the transmission tunnel. And it was square tubing on this side. And we laid a panel on there and riveted it on and louvered the whole bottom of the car. So what we're thinking is we might, we probably will, where the floor is built this way, flat, 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 flat. I can, and with square tubing, I can lay any sheet of metal I want to on the, on the bottom side of this car without affecting its mounting. So we might trim these back three quarters of an inch, square tubing on this side, lay the square tubing all along there like that. And then we'll lay, make one nice new sheet of metal, whatever we're gonna do it with, and we'll louver the whole thing and paint it and, and root lip and rivet it to the car before we put it back on. That way there, we can paint down the car if we want to. Also, it'll look really, kind of really, really, really cool to be looking underneath the car and see nothing but louvers. You know, we have a little bit of chassis showing, but that's what we're thinking. So, I'll throw the dash on real quick. It looks close, but Closest in horn, horseshoes and hand grenades, that's what close is for. Huh. You know that, would you? Just like that. Nope, not just like that. Now I have to weld some pieces on the top of the square tubing to the window brace around the front so I can have a screw to come up through to hit the wood. I think I don't think it has to be hard on, or hope not, and I'll just cut a hole in it with the plasma cutter. So that's what the dash looks like. This can be easily done with a piece of Bristol board. We lay that on there. Get it straight on there, and then we come along and trace that, tape a piece on it, make this top piece. Same with the side pieces, same with this piece over here. This piece is going to be made like that. It'll be a nice piece made for that. Make it fit the floor all the way along, raise up in there like that. Awesome, eh? Well, and another thing, what we're thinking too, or Jolene's been going over it, the side will become up carpet, 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 and then we're going to do something with the top, maybe. We're going to talk to Jeff and see what happens there. It would be nice, maybe another piece of wood in here, maybe something with a little grade to it. And I was thinking, I know how Jeff can put a grade in it. All he has to do is veneer one side. He said it'll bend the wood, won't it? Something like that. Anyways, we'll go. We'll go from there after. But you can see how, however, how we're going. Like all this will be carpet, 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 carpet. Run right up to the headliner. Um, this will be carpet. I'm thinking. Uh, a vinyl or, or leather with paint. We're going to do this part with the wood around the window. Dash is in. Steer. There, that's what that looks like. And that looks very strong, does it not? Um, and that's what we might do on the underneath the car. We cut them back three quarters of an inch. Uh, fill that gap in so you can't tell. 
The dash is okay. Uh, this is gonna be a nice place for the shifter, I feel. I'm gonna jump in your head, Jolene, just to check it out. As I'm here, um, we're not gonna be much further off the floor. We are going to get as close to the floor as we can. And that's very, yeah. So if I took and, and, and took my dry shaft tunnel and brought it down to the transmission and then to come back up, and you know, this, this would be useless uh, to me. Um, this is race car stuff, this console um, with the set down inside the seat um, with the laid back feeling to drive this thing. She's gonna be badass. So that's what I'm doing or that's what I've done. That's what the console looks like. I feel like anybody could do that. Um, it does not have to be, there's a few things, a few tools that you need, you know, you want to get these up going up straight, um, you want a tape measure, um, does not matter about your gaps, as you can see I'm welding them shut, does not matter, does not affect anything, all it does is make sure that you have penetration, to me, um, I'll just guard them off the flapper wheel to make it look nice. I was going to try to build a seat, um, I'm going to have to try to get some metal, I was going, there's a seat there. I got some one inch plane around here. Got some one inch plate. Uh, I was going to trace the sides of the seat in. See what I can get. Because I can weld it together. Um, I'm just, the seat that I'm going to try to make, uh, the seat I'm going to try to make, if you can picture it, this is, the, this is the metal that I want, or close. I'm gonna to try to straighten this out a little bit. I don't like this hump up like that. I think I'll take, bring it straight up and then down. But as I do this, this is gonna be, this is the foam. This is the metal side. This, the metal's gonna be welded on the bottom of it. And this is gonna be filled to the top with foam. So the seat is gonna look very delicate, or very mint, very elegant. The seat is gonna look very thin, but it's all going to be cushioned because the side is going to be one eighth plate and the back of it's going to be 18 gauge or whatever I have. Probably 18 to have to send for another sheet maybe. Uh, and that's how I'll make the seat. We'll mount the seats in to make sure that we get enough room. With this seat, we knew that we had six inches we could get back. That's good because we need it. Um, it. It needs to have it. You know, why, can't, why not take all the room if we can take it? Um, we're soon going to have to build a, a gas tank in back here somewhere. Don't know yet, maybe underneath, I'm not sure yet what's going on. But that's, that's the console of the car, and then you can tell me how strong you think that is. There's, uh, I don't think you're going down through the floor on that. And uh, I think when it's all bolted down, how much stronger that car is really going to be. Also, using the square tubing is a benefit because you can put any size of panel you want to. Any size of panel you want to. And this is like the Jaguar. This has got the flat floor. This is an early one. Have a good day, everybody. We're having a good day. I want to thank everybody for buying the gear. I keep saying it. Like and share. Like and share. Um, if you have any questions that you want answered, put them on the old, uh, on the, where you talk there. What? Comments. Throw them down in the comments and I'll answer your questions if I can. And I will tell you nothing but the truth. And the truth of the matter is, I'm going to start tapping my lymph nodes. I got filled up the last couple days with grinding dust, and I just want to make sure that my filters are working on my lymph node system so I'm not getting any infections, if you know what I'm trying to tell you. And what you do is you just tap that little hole right there. That is the, the filter for your lymph nodes that run through your body. Um, if you do not make, get them working, you can get stuffed up and, and get feeling sick. If you start feeling sick at any time, tap right there in the hole. Like that, get the, get the lymph nodes running through your filters. Massage your face, massage your face. Make sure all your lymph nodes are running through your face and going down and dripping through your filters. Um, you will feel your face drain if you were infection in your head. You will feel it drain, guarantee it. Uh, if you do not believe me, try it. Have a good one, everybody.